Hello, my name is David Ratcliffe, and I'm the president of Ultrasonic Records, and welcome to the show. We're going to give you a little demonstration today of the Ultrasonic V8 record cleaner and also the new dryer cube that's just out. I know in the past most of you have been cleaning your records uh, by some method, many people just using a cloth and maybe a little alcohol or liquid. Others are using vacuum machines. Uh, brushes were very popular back in the day and still are. And of course, uh, you might have a vintage battery powered cleaner here from 1976 as seen on TV. Hopefully you'll consider uh, the V8 if you haven't already purchased one. It is really the best way. All the pros will tell you to clean your records today. We're using sound waves, we're using distilled water, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, a little surfactant, and we'll get into all, all the details, but uh, you'll really hear more information from your records, enjoy your music much more if your records are ultrasonically clean. The standard V8 cleaner comes in a stainless steel finish with a blue decal on the front. It is available with some options, uh, namely a nice black decal on the front and also artwork. Uh, those are shown on my website. Uh, you can have decals and graphics and a variety of things to enhance the look of your gear. The dryer cube is also available in a variety of finishes. The standard is black, but you can get it in an upgraded model with stainless steel or artwork. We can put decals on the side, and all of that is shown with uh, samples on our website. Okay, we're getting uh, all set up here for you. The uh, basic two components are the base, the tower system, and the tank. So. The tank sits on top of the tower and the base. Uh, it's designed to move around easily, front to back, left to right. When we get our records loaded up, it makes it adjustable for you. Uh, we have plugged the unit in, started to put a little water in. We've also plugged in the motor for the drive system. Okay, um, I'm going to add a little water. The tank holds uh, almost two gallons, almost 10 liters. We are using just distilled water. This is water produced by steam. I get this at the grocery store for about 88 cents a gallon is what I've been paying for it. There is a line inside, a maximum fill line, which really doesn't apply to us. We're going to add water up so that we're safe on our records, that we're not getting any water onto our labels. There are two other elements that we add to our distilled water. One is uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm only adding about three or four ounces. The importance of that alcohol is really to remove the oils and grease that sometimes are on our records. They're on there from our fingerprints, but especially on a brand new record, you have mold release compounds. When that record is manufactured, they use chemicals to help it pop out of the mold. And it's kind of odd to me, but no one in the industry seems to remind us that those records, even though they're brand new, need to be clean before you play them the first time. Okay, the third ingredient that we're adding is a surfactant. And this particular one, we're using Kodak PhotoFlow, which has been around a long time. Uh, I give you a starter bottle of that to get you going, um, which is like this. But this is concentrated, and I'm really only using two or three drops of that. What does it do? Well, it breaks the surface tension of the water, and it really allows the water to sheet off and aids in drying. All right, next we'll uh, talk about the goodie box a little bit. And you might be curious as to what is in the goodie box. Well, let's open it up. We do have that sample of PhotoFlow surfactant there. Do have some spare filters for your pump filter assembly. We'll be showing those in just a minute. And we do have some goodies. Always, I like candy, so we've put some candy in there for you. Sweeten, sweeten the deal up a little bit. 
Also have some nitrile gloves in here. If you want to handle your records in any of this process, it's nice to have those. There's no powder on those gloves. Um, also have an Allen wrench. If you need to make any adjustments to the gear, you can do that. And also we have a pair of earplugs. If the noise is a little bit too much for you, you can use those. All right, next we're going to continue adding our records here to our record holder. You can use one record or you can load it with four, five, or eight records at once. I recommend uh, when the first time you're doing it, maybe just starting out with three or four records to get familiar with the system. We're using spacers between the records and these are often mistook for label protectors. Um, they're not really, the labels do not get wet because we keep the water level low in the machine. So these are really spacers to allow the cavitation to work from ultrasonic cleaning. Okay, so we're going to put the end cap on there, needle bearing, and a little stop. This base is very handy to aid in holding your records. All right, next we're going to just add it onto the tower. I'm making sure the alignment is proper. And as we said earlier, this is easily moved left or right, slide it left or right, or front to back. If our records are not rotating, we may need to adjust the gears. And this is, this is a very simple adjustment. The motor rotates in this strap. And you can just cer certainly move it to the gears engage, just a little tension and they're rotating. There is one screw on the bottom. This red adjustment screw, and sometimes I'll back that off a little bit. It makes the motor turn in the elliptical and engage, and then I'll just snug it down a little bit. But you'll see the records are turning. The particular motor we're using is a 0.5 RPM motor. It turns the records very slowly. In a 10 minute cycle, they'll go around five times, which is more than adequate to clean your records ultrasonically. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about the pump filter assembly. The filter is removable. We're using a medical grade filter with a little sponge holder on that side. You do have extra filters in your goodie box. These are very easy to keep clean. You just rinse them under the sink both sides, you don't even have to remove them. They slide back in that little groove right there with the foam facing the waterfall right there. Okay. The only other component is the pickup tube it goes down in the tank. If that gets dislodged, it comes straight up like that. And again, there's a little slot here and a hole. It just simply goes into the hole and presses down, just like that. Okay, next, we'll just install it. It drops right into the corner. That's all there is to it. And we're going to prime that pump with a little bit of water. Again, we're using the same distilled water. Okay, the final step before we start cleaning is we're going to check that water level. Top it up and make sure that we're not getting any water on our record labels. This is where the LED flashlight comes in handy. And we just want to make sure that we have enough water, but we're not going to hit our disc, our spacer disc. and our records are turning. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on. We like to set our timer for 10 minutes. This side of the control panel is for the temperature. It is in centigrade, and I usually bump that up to 40 degrees centigrade. 
this will turn on the ultrasonic part. And we're cleaning. This would be a good time to uh, take a break and maybe go in the kitchen or in the bar and fix yourself a drink. Congratulations, you've gotten this far. You're cleaning records ultrasonically. Okay, 10 minutes have passed and uh, our ultrasonic V8 has stopped. Gave me time to uh, have a little refreshment break. Our research has shown, you'll find this very interesting, that the cleaning process is fairly even whether you're drinking beer, wine, or mixed drinks. We've done a lot of research there and the results seem to be fairly even. Just thought you'd want to know that. Okay, we're going to move on to the drying process. We begin that by shaking the records off. At this point I'll just remind you of the bearings. There's one on this side, a little needle bearing, and there's one over here on this side. Goes inside of the tank. We'll show you a close-up of that in just a second, but that's what it rides on and it makes the record spin a little bit easier, especially a full load. Okay, we're going to drop them right into the dryer cube and I'm watching the bearings. They, they went right into position. If I needed to move them, I could just slide them over very easily on the shaft and they're rolling. One other thing that came in your dryer kit is a little hand crank that we're going to put on to make it easy to spin the records a little bit during the drying process. It has a small set screw And we're going to use the smallest hole for the shaft and just snug that down. And then I'll tighten the thumb screw down a little bit. And make sure that it turns. Okay, we've got our records all loaded in the dryer cube. We'll put on the acrylic lid. And we'll turn on the timer. This is a countdown timer. It does 5, 10, 15 minutes. We'll come over and give the records a little spin. And off we go. Okay, our dryer has stopped. We'll take the top off. Pull our records out, place them on the holder, slide everything off. This is a step that's very important and it involves just simply placing your new clean dry record onto a clean sleeve and then I use a nice high quality carbon fiber brush and simply run it around the record a couple times. That's going to remove any loose surface dust that's come to the top. Brush it a couple times. Slice it, place it into a new sleeve. And we're done. Keep repeating the process. Okay, one comment that I get very often from customers that are just cleaning their first batch of records is they're noticing how sparkly clean that they are. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but the records are really shiny, really clean. Okay, if you have 45 RPM records, you might want to consider another option we have is a kit to clean 45s. It's a whole set of spacers, another rod, gears, crank, every, everything that you need to do 45s. The V8 by itself will of course clean 12 inch and 10 inch records. Now if you have a lot of records and you really want to get production ramped up to clean a lot, then you might want our speed doubler kit. 
And all that is, is just another rod, spacers, gears, crank, everything all in one. You're cleaning 16 sides on the V8 washer. At the same time, you're drying 16 sides on the dryer cube, and then you can switch off and reload. That's, that's a lot of cleaning power to do at one time. Okay, we have more information on this, of course, on our website, ultrasonicrecords.com.